All right, so you've downloaded it, you've installed it. More than likely, these file paths will have auto-filled. So RIMPI is a nice feature of auto-filling these file paths. Uh, if they don't auto-fill properly, you may need to do that manually. But, you know, nine times out of ten, it's going to be just fine. So in the top left here, we have settings. In the settings folder, you're going to find mod lists, which are probably going to be the only thing you're going to mess with for the most part. You also have a colors file, which is a list. If you choose to color your mods, it will save that info here. And then it's got some various other information that RimPy uses. Notably, the rules folder, or the rules file rather, um, this would be where local rules are applied that you make for mod load ordering. We're not going to worry too much about that at this moment, but just know this is the RimPy mods manager settings. Here you have the game version of RimWorld listed. That is separate from the RimPy mod manager version, which is above. You click this button. And congratulations, you have deleted RimWorld. Just a joke. All right, and, and then on the right side here, you have uh, your themes. Most important button in the entire thing, because if you don't have it on dark, it actually is um, not as fast. It slows RimPy down. I'm just kidding, that's a lie, but dark theme is better because, uh, you know, it's not as abrasive on the eyes. So, yeah, cool little button there. And then you have your game folder, you have your config folder, you have your Steam mod folder, and you have your local mod folder. Now, all of this stuff is where your local installs are. So, RimWorld, it's wherever you've locally installed it on that game folder. The config folder, it's where your configs are. And this is important to note because mods will not delete these. You have to manually delete configs every once in a while. You see I have three dubs bad hygienes there. Uh, that's just how RimWorld's designed. It's not a failure on the modders, the mod creators. But if you do delete this folder, and by this folder I mean the RimWorld by Ludion Studios, all this stuff, if you do delete it, just note you'll lose the mods config XML, which is your mod load list, and you'll lose saves and scenarios and other stuff that you've saved. These are basically all the RimWorld settings in this folder. So all that info from RimWorld, you do need to delete every once in a while, uh, but it's not important to delete it frequently. In fact, you probably shouldn't delete it frequently unless you like to redo all your settings, but you know, each their own. Um, but I would, I, every once in a blue moon, and especially if you are inc encountering persistent errors, it's a good idea to remove these mod settings, also known as mod configs. Underneath that, your Steam mods location, all numbered, not making much sense, but you can open them up if you want. Local mods. These are mods that are on your in your RimWorld install that are not Steam mods. This is, these are two of my own mods that I have there. And then the EXP. This is your vanilla mods, aka the game itself. These are also where your official expansions and if there is more DLC other than royalty in the future, that's where that'll all go. I don't own royalty, so that's why it's not there. So that is that list done. All these file paths for me were auto-filled. I didn't have to touch them at all, so that worked out perfectly. If you do have to change them, just know it's very simple. You just copy and paste. Then you can hide that. It's a little collapsible bar there. So we're going to focus on this mods tab and we'll go over the other tabs later in other videos. But for now, 
we'll just focus on what 99.9% .9 of your modding experience with RimPy is going to be like. So here you have an inactive list and an active list. The inactives, believe it or not, are mods that are not loaded and will not be loaded into the game when you start it. And the active list is, you guessed it, actively loaded. So here we have an S and an L next to a search bar next to a bunch of different filters. The S is for Steam, the L is for Local, and the SL is for all of the above. We want to search, we can view all mods, or we can just view one mod or whatever mod we search for. For example, if I search for Doc, pulls up whatever matches Doc, and then I can unhide the other mods. You can see there are the lower opacity or hidden, grayed out, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but it's useful mainly for active lists. And active lists are... This feature is useful for it because you can see where a mod is actually loaded. So in, a, in an active list, you could know, oh, this mod is loaded at this position. And then you could manipulate that if you want. And then you can also change the filter. So for a filter, you have name, author, path, package ID, color code, and game version. So if we click a mod, we'll try this one, DUR or Doc Universal Resources. This mod is up and coming. It's not yet released, but it will be. And right now its name can be viewed here. You can see the preview image, you can see the authors who are denoted in the about XML, aka just me for this one. You can see where it's installed locally on your computer, and you can see the package ID. Package ID is kind of like a name, it's just more specific, less volatile. Probably not something you'll mess with unless you're a mod creator. And then you have the summary of the mod down below. Now this is very similar to the vanilla mod manager and it shows the same amount of info. Actually it shows more info because you have some of the uh, install pathing and whatnot. So once you have that understood, you can then get an overview of any mod you choose. And if you want, you can change the color of those mods. Or if you right click it, you get a bunch of options. So Let's see, you can open it, open the folder, or aka the mod. You can open the URL where you downloaded it from, if it has one. You can re-download it. You can change the mod color. And you can filter by the color that it has. And you can change and share sorting rules, and you can even delete or unsubscribe them. So let's check out the mod coloring. So here you have a whole palette. You can choose HTML colors, you can choose hues, a bunch of options. You can make the whole thing a rainbow. I don't mess around too much with it. I used to when I did categorical mod sorting. I no longer do categorical mod sorting. Um, but some of you out there will still want to categorize your mods, and that's all well and good. And this will be a neat little thing for you. I mostly just highlight mods now that I uh, sort as basic tools for me. So like I'll probably color most of these reds, most of these mods red when I uh, actually use it. But aside from that, so you have that sorting. Um, author, for example, if I change it, I now put in DR and I've got four mods that pop up. Here you can see the DR from Andres is uh, showing. And then here you can see the DR from Dr. Zhivago. So that's the difference there. And how that works, or you can do game version 1.1, for example. All these mods work on 1.1, and you can see the mods that don't. Beautiful. Okay. Then we uh, can come over and start messing around with the actual loading portion of RimPy. So, this refresh button is what we would use to see if we have new downloads. 
So we could click it and then we would alphabetize the inactive lists and any new mod we downloaded that is installed at either the Steam mods or local mods location would then pop up. Um, we didn't, so <laughs> nothing changed. But that is refresh. It's useful when you're in the middle of modding your game. Clearing will remove all the actively loaded mods. So I just drag and dropped all those mods into my active lists. Now I clear them and it brings me back to core. So useful to uh, reset back to vanilla. Restoring is an interesting feature. If I load my mods and then I save it, which will then overwrite a vanilla mods config, AKA it'll overwrite your mod list, the load list. And that again is saved in your configs here. So if I save it and overwrite it, and then I X out a RimPy, reboot it. Now we'll see, I can clear it. And, and now I'm worried. I'm like, oh man, when I loaded RimPy, I had a good list and now I messed around with it and it sucks. You should note that this restore function works with the first loaded mod list when you booted RimPy. So if you close RimPy and then reboot it, it'll restore to the new list of whatever it reboots to. So it's an interesting little feature. Um, if you're messing around with mod load lists and you want to return to that original list from when you first booted RimPy, again, if I X out and reboot it, that'll be considered a first boot. But whenever you first booted it, it'll restore to that mod load list. Sorting, a very useful feature, probably the most useful feature of RimPy, and uh, certainly something we could delve into quite a bit. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but a couple things should be noted here. The first thing is, get the community database, AKA the Steam mod, use it. It is a community database that will help resolve a lot of issues Granted, it's imperfect, right? It's not going to fix 100% of things, and there will be errors encountered with that community database. But that being said, it is much better and in development, and contributions come globally from whomever. So different sorting errors can be solved by using that database. And... If you do not choose to use it, then you're basically just going to be using a vanilla plus sorting. So slightly better than vanilla, but not nearly as good as if you do use the community database. Database should be kept in the inactive list. Do not put it in the active lists. Can, but it'll log an error. So just know, leave it in inactive. It'll do its thing. Load your mods in the active list. Database inactive, mods active. <laughs> Simple enough, great. Hopefully get through those thick skulls. Now, sorting. How does it work? We click the button, it does some magic, looks at what the mods have, and then it puts them where they should go, depending on the rules. The rules are denoted and publicly available in the Discord, as well as on the Steam description. Read them. Understand them. Know that the way it sorts is not designed to be categorical and not just alphabetical, but you will notice that it is putting in most of them alphabetically. So let's focus on that because a lot of people get tripped up by this. It chooses or RimPy has been designed to load mods in a way that is more uniform globally. So it is not categorically sorting 
because categorical sorting is more subjective. This chooses a more objective route, and that objectivity will help create mod load lists that are uniform across everyone's machine, everyone's PC. And that'll help reduce errors. And that is the whole goal of RimPy and the community database and sorting as it exists today, is to reduce errors across everyone's experience of playing RimWorld. So know that it's not designed to be categorical and it is more than just alphabetical but you will notice that it does do most mods alphabetically because that's where they need to be. However, the more mods you have, the more differences you'll see in that sorting. So once that is done, you can then save it. After that's sorted, you can save it and then you can run and that will launch RimWorld. And again, saving overwrites that vanilla mods config XML that I showed you which is your mod load list. Now, if we want to do multiple lists, we can do that and we'll get into it down here. But that is sorting and that is the basic overview of how sorting works. Again, go educate yourself, go read the documentation. It's not very much and it will help you understand how RimPy works on the auto sorting feature. Why it may not do it how you want it to do it. After that, you have a strip mods feature. We'll click it and see if it loads. It may take a while to load, and I'll just kind of explain what it does while it loads, and if it doesn't load or if it takes too long, we'll just ignore it. But basically what this does is it searches through all of your mods, and it looks for files and folders that RimPy believes you will not need. So for example, most mod users are not gonna be interested in the source files that are used and bundled with mods because those are for creating and not for using the mods. And most modder, most people who use mods will not be interested in .git files. Most mod users will not be interested in other versions packaged with the mods other than the one they currently play. What do I mean by all of this? Well, basically, a lot of mod creators package excess files in with their mods. And this stripping mod feature will try to remove those excess files. Now, removing that is, of course, not a 100% guarantee that it will not cause issues. But for the majority of mods, the stripping feature will help reduce the size of the files or reduce the size of the mod, requiring fewer files and therefore requiring less storage space. So, in one word, or one sentence anyways, stripping mods reduces st required storage space. And so this has taken a while, we're just gonna ignore it, but it'll show you which files are selected for deletion and then you can strip selected files. And you must notice this warning here. If you are a mod creator, be careful about stripping because it might delete your source files. So personally, I don't even use the stripping mods feature because I don't have storage space issues. Um, you might want to use this if you're trying to port have portable mods or trying to reduce the... Uh, space required on your hard drive or solid state drive or whatever other drive in the future. Um, so basically this is just used for smaller file sizes. Smaller storage space doesn't change file sizes. Uh, Redownloading. What is that going to do? That's going to change or basically delete all of your mods and redownload them from Steam. And if you click that, it'll warn you before that because you may have hundreds of mods and it may take a while for all your mods to re-download. So make sure that you are ready before you click yes. Otherwise, you're going to be disappointed and that'll be your fault. Create a pack. What does that do? Well, 
This was a feature that was designed originally to create and share mod collections. Now, the Steam collection is still a work in progress. It used to work in 1.0, 1.1, RimWorld broke it. Uh, it. broke a lot of things, but this is one of the things it broke. And essentially, what you can use this for currently, and in the future, ideally, will be to create mod collections. And right now you can use that to download all your mods locally. And then you can avoid Steam updates and mod corruptions or save corruptions or all that stuff that I'm sure you longtime modders have ran into with your saves being destroyed because of a bad Steam update. So you can do that by creating a local mod pack to download all your mods locally. And here you designate where you want it to download to, so the file path. You can upload an image to be associated with it. You can set a prefix, so each mod, say for example, if I wanted a, um, a mod collection labeled vanilla, and it has just a very small collection of mods, and I put VNL. So each mod would be downloaded with a prefix VNL and then the mod name. So for example, if it downloaded Harmony, it would be VNL underscore Harmony. And then I would know with that prefix that that mod is part of that collection. And then you can give the entire pack a mod a name. You can give the entire pack an author. Anybody you want be your grandmother. I don't know. And then you could... Um, but your game version, so what RimWorld game version you want. Is 1.1 or 1.2 or God forbid if you're on Alpha 16 still, you could make it for that one. And then a uh, small description. All right. After that, you have a log analyzer. This will be useful for troubleshooting. It's not going to be useful for your average user, um, but basically what happens is if you get an error in your debug log, you can copy that onto your clipboard and then this log analyzer will try to find mods that are relevant to that debug error. I'm not going to go into depth on that. Troubleshooting is a whole nother story and that's going to be something that's that's a rabbit hole I'm not diving into right now. So just know log analyzer mainly useful for uh, troubleshooting errors. Donations. If you want, you can click that and you can donate to uh, Rupal, who is the author of uh, this software. Again, I always think it's good to reinforce the idea that you, you should give money into ideas, concepts, content, wares, whatever, stuff that you find valuable, right? You shouldn't be forced to pay for things in life unless, you know, it's the government, you got to pay your taxes, etc., etc. But basically, I'd rather live in a world without a big stick, so try to pay where you can. If you can't, you know, is what it is. But remember, you'd rather pay for things that you enjoy than be forced to pay for things that you don't. After that, mod lists. What are we doing here? So if you want to create a mod list and you want multiple, this is where this feature will come in handy. You can export a mod list. So for example, we have a mod list set up here. We can export it and that'll bring us to the RimPy configs in the mod list folder. And then we can create some basic ones. So let's just overwrite this tester folder or tester file. We're going to overwrite it. And then we're going to create a second one. And we'll know that because it's just a smaller one. We're going to save and then we're going to export. And we're going to overwrite this one. All right. And so now we have two mod lists that we've made. And if we want, we can import the first one. And it'll show us this is what's going to change. These are all being added. That's why they're green. We're going to import it. And boom, now we had that original one. 
And then we want to go back to that one we just had. So it'll show us red. These are being removed from our current list. And this is what will be loaded. Import. And back to the second one. So it's that easy to switch between mod lists. You don't have to boot up RimWorld to change. So I know some of you out there are going to have long load times. So it may take you 30 minutes just to get into the game. Then you change your mod list. And then you got to close RimWorld and wait another 30 minutes. So this helps at least have that time that is required. That's in and of itself an incredibly useful feature for having a third party mod manager. And then the other button that we haven't touched on is importing a save. And what that means, it's not actually importing saves, it's importing a mod list from a save. So here you have whatever saves that you have accumulated from your RimWorld plays, and you can just automatically import a mod list from that save. And you'll see here, it's showing me what I currently have and what will be loaded based on that save. I'm just going to cancel that. And so that is the mod list portion of this. Very useful tools, very neat to be able to switch that easily between mod lists and not have to boot up RimWorld to do so. Underneath that is our sharing ability. So what this does is copies mod links and mod names. Right now, if I copy to clipboard, I will get all of these currently active mods on my clipboard. And then you'll see in a text editor, I can paste it. And now I have a mod list with a length, okay, how many are loaded, as well as the names and the links with them. And that's very useful, say, if you want to share your mod list with a friend, you can do that. And an even cooler way of doing that is submitting it to re-entry. And so you'll see this pop up. Make sure you highlight and control C or copy that anyways. You can right click too. Copy that before you click OK, because otherwise you're going to have to wait a little while and it'll, it'll annoy you. <laughs> That being said, once you copy the link, you go to a web browser, come here, paste it, enter, and boom. This feature is really neat because you can actually just click the links and it'll bring you to the mod. And then you can just directly subscribe to it. it does not auto subscribe to you or to your list. So that's one thing I guess that's missing. But in general, a very neat feature because, uh, it allows you to share your, with your friends or family or enemies, I don't know, whatever you want. Share your load lists that work or don't work. And after that, all that's left is your save and your run. Basically, anytime you make an edit to your mod list, you're going to want to save it before you hit run. Because running it boots up RimWorld. And saving it overwrites that mod list, the vanilla mod list which is separate from the RimPy mod lists. And if you overwrite it, then you're loading whatever's in your active lists. So basically, saving it, now all these mods will load, and then I click Run, and that'll boot RimWorld, and then I get to play with these mods. So that's a quick overview, if you can call it quick, of some of the features and the power behind RimPy. Hope you enjoyed it and I hope it makes your RimWorld experience better, as I'm sure Paladin does too.